Hello and welcome back to my channel. In the last uh, session, we took a look at venture capital from the entrepreneur's perspective. This time, I would like to put on my investor hat, my LP hat. I do tend to spend quite a bit of time with LPs in private capital. And uh, I'd like to relate a little bit the challenges if and when investing in venture capital. VC is clearly not for the risk averse investors. It requires a certain risk appetite. It requires a certain risk capacity. And I will show you in this lecture why this is the case. Nevertheless, let's first start off with a uh, look at the a historical perspective. This shows the uh, mean allocation out of total AUM to venture capital over the last two decades from just over 150 institutional investors. So the blue line here is the, uh, uh, the average of those 150 investors. And then the top decal, meaning the top uh, 16 investors, have clearly over the last 20 years allocated a larger percentage of their total AUM to venture capital. Not surprising, especially uh, when you're close to what we call family offices, institutional investors that are managing the, uh, the wealth of families or high net worth individuals. There, the increase has been even larger over the last 10 years alone. Now, VC, nevertheless, is a business of investing in outliers. And let me give you a little bit of a, an, an example around that. So the venture capital business is a 100% game of outliers, extreme exceptions. In the order of about 4,000 fundable companies a year are out there that raise, that want to raise venture capital. Fundable meaning they are reasonably investable. They have a business model that would be attractive to venture capitalists. About 200 of those will get funded by what we consider a top tier VC. 15 of those 200 will someday get to $100 million in revenue. And those 15 from that year will generate something in the order of 97% of all returns for the entire category of VC in that year. This is a quote from Mark Andreessen, who is a co-founder of Andreessen Horowitz, one of the top um, venture capital funds out of uh, Silicon Valley. And clearly it drives home the, uh, the risk when investing in venture. Getting access to those top tier VCs that will be the home for those 15 startups that drive 97% of all returns is clearly a challenge for institutional investors for LPs that are potentially new to the game of allocating to venture capital. Now, in terms of returns, what he is uh, referring to is clearly what we call the power law. And here, just an example, imagine you would invest in more than 10,000 startups a year. Globally, we probably see those kind of allocations. So 97% of all profits at exit from those 10,000 startups will come from about 10 startups. So that is the magnitude, just a different example to put it in perspective. All those um, unicorns and those success stories that you hear about, they are, there's obviously a very large selection bias. We don't hear about those thousands of startups that start off, take venture capital, but never make it to the next round or never make it to, uh, to a stage where they are uh, po uh, have a positive cash flow. So what are distributions in a venture capital portfolio look like? So statistically, and there are plenty of academic papers that have been written about it already from the 90s and then for the 2000s, when we basically look at the return, it looks pretty much on average, a VC portfolio will look as follows. So the majority of companies will fail. There will be a few companies that will break even. And then there are very few companies that usually two out of 10 statistically will return the funds capital and will offer some return for the investors. So usually out of uh, 10 investee companies, eight companies will 
not return the money invested in the companies. They may have some return, they may be some they may be somehow successful, but they will not return the same amount of money that was invested in uh, in the funds originally. So that's a pretty stark um, proposition as an investment portfolio. So what actually can go wrong from the point of a VC? So we have two things in venture capital. There's false positive and the false negative problem. The false positive problem simply means that venture capitalists will allocate to the best of their knowledge in companies that they feel will, will highly succeed. Nevertheless, 60% of the investees will return between zero and one X. One X being one time the money invested in the fund, i.e. they will be loss making. And only 0.4% are basically out of all VCs invested will have a 50x, I mean, will return 50 times the money invested uh, at the original stage. This is basically from uh, Correlation Ventures, which publishes regularly data on the industry. So those of you who are interested, please have a look at them. And this was based on uh, uh, over 20,000 uh, funding rounds. So this is a pretty, again, drives home the same message. So the false positive problem is a real one. Very, very few of those companies that receive venture funding will actually return more than 1x. Now, let's move on to the false negatives in venture capital. And uh, what I would like to show you is a, um, the um, uh, anti-portfolio that Bessemer Venture Partners publishes regularly and updates regularly as well. So traditionally, venture capitalists will try to pick winners when they deploy their first round of funding. And we could have a long conversation around it, how realistic that even is, to be able to pick that, that, uh, that, that Google, that YouTube, right on the get-go when you're investing your first round. So Bessemer Venture Partners, nevertheless, let me add to that, is one of the venture, very successful venture capital funds that has been around for over 20 years. So clearly has a lot of uh, historical data. So let's have a look at some of their portfolio. So basically, uh, they basically were one of the VCs that had a look at Google and basically said, sorry, we won't invest, no traction. So they basically published very clearly those companies that in hindsight, they should have invested in. Nevertheless, they had an opportunity to meet. They potentially met them in their office did even some due diligence, but decided against it. So Google was in that uh, part. Facebook, Snap, Compaq, Lotus, um, there, for them, they did actually a real serious review of the TV, of the, uh, of the team. Um, for Tesla, Airbnb, eBay, they even had a one-on-one -on -one meeting, follow-on meetings, um, intensive diligence. And like I said, for all those companies here on the right-hand side, they pretty much said no to that. And then come the ones that they actually invested in. Now, this is not a, uh, this is quite an interesting portfolio, but uh, still you start wondering about the ones that did get away. And given that this is one of the top decile funds in the industry, when investing in venture capital, one just has to be ready to make decisions that are in hindsight suboptimal. Now, the LPs nevertheless are quite aware of that. We had in 2012, a uh, quite well-known uh, report was published by um, the Kaufman Foundation by Diane Mulcahy. She uh, basically looked at the data of this long-standing investor in venture capital and all the way back till the 70s. And she said, well, let's have a look out of all our VC allocations, how many of those funds actually did well. And as you could, can see here, half of all VC funds in the portfolio fail to return investor capital. That's half of the funds. So 50 out of 100 funds will not even return the capital invested. And she also cross-checked that with other LPs that have been in venture capital for decades, Washington Mutual, Oregon Public Employees Retirement Fund, and so on. And the, uh, the result was most LPs fail to realize a 2x venture rate of return. So which is then you start wondering, um, does it make sense as an LP to allocate to venture capital? Given its riskiness, are you getting the returns that you deserve? 
for the riskiness of the capital? Or are you better off to just go out and buy yourself an ETF in an index and potentially have a more consistent return? So obviously venture capital returns by vintage year. And when she looked at that, it was in 2012. So um, looking at it from 2010, have clearly since the late 90s, since the original dot-com bubble bursting, um, been on average, not that impressive. And LPs are aware of that and are always asking, is it still, is it still a, uh, a solid investment decision to allocate to venture capital? Now, I also would add, like to add to that, um, the dispersion in venture capital investing, meaning the, um, uh, the, the delta, the difference between top quartile and bottom quartile is very large. So let me have show you a little bit. So here on the right hand side, we see global publicly listed equity. So clearly, as you can see, the, the difference here between the top performers and the bottom performers is not very large. So if you are an LP and you are getting average returns, you're doing OK. Now, when we look at private equity, private equity already, the, uh, the um, dispersion is significantly larger than in public equity markets. So again, whilst the top quartile of those funds are doing really, really well, the bottom quartile, it's highly questionable whether you should bother investing in them if you're not getting at a minimum the, uh, the um, uh, median returns here, which is the black little uh, dot here. And then let's have a look at global venture capital. So again, the top quartile, fantastic. Bottom quartile, not that impressive considering the risk that you're running in terms of losing uh, your invested capital or having losses on your invested capital. So again, basically, question, is uh, so it, I think by now everyone is pretty clear that investing in venture capital is a pretty risky proposition, requires a pretty decent risk appetite. Now, the question obviously is then, is failure part of the strategy? And just some quotes from some of the players in the industry. So Mark Andreessen basically says very clearly, companies that have the really extreme strength often have serious flaws. Those are investee companies. One of the cautionary lessons of VC is if you don't invest on the basis of serious flaws, you don't invest in most of the big winners either. So you will be really little, uh, missing out. So you need that risk appetite. You need that willingness to be able to write off eight out of 10 companies, but to have those two winners in your portfolio, you need to have the risk capacity as well. And Peter Thiel, uh, one of the, uh, the, the super angels out of the valley basically says, firstly, you will only invest, you will only considering investing in companies that have the potential to return the value of the entire fund. So that gives you obviously, if you're an entrepreneur out there, that's the lens through which every VC will take a look at your fledgling startup. Is this startup, does this startup have to, the potential to return at one point my fund? So if you're raising your first round of funding, the, um, the target IRR that venture capitalists will expect from their uh, investee companies are often in their 50 to, 50 to 100 percent target IRR per investee company. So that's basically will give some of the entrepreneurs some food for thought. So the question obviously then is, you should ask yourself, how can LPs de-risk their VC portfolio? And the obvious answer obviously is diversification. So diversification obviously in venture capital, nevertheless, starts only at approximately 100 companies. So 80 to 100 startups in early stage investing will give you the kind of diversification that you may uh, that you may need. So you got to ask yourself, obviously, can you achieve that as an LP? Can you get exposure to 100 startups so you can argue that your portfolio is reasonably diversified? So in future sessions, we have so far tackled the entrepreneur's perspective. We will come back to the VC's perspective after this little detour onto the LP side. And we will take a closer look at the valuing and structuring of investments as well. So 
I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, please do give it a like below. And what you should take away from this class is number one, investing in venture capital funds is risky due to the high risk of failure in, of startups in any VC portfolio. Diversification may help. Nevertheless, it's difficult to achieve as an LP. And few funds are consistently and over the long run successful in venture capital. I will put a few interviews with venture capitalists in the uh, notes below. So please take a look at those interviews as well. They will give you additional perspective.